things that, that uh, have to do with that in a minute. But, so, what we're getting at in 2 Thessalonians is there are going to be some of those when this age of grace is up that are going straight to wrath. And then they're going to be us, and we're going straight up to glory. That's the end point. Let's uh, read uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 1, verses 11 and 12. Wherefore also we pray always for you that what God would count you worthy of his, this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the worth of faith, with, excuse me, the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, meantime, while this is not, hasn't happened yet, he's saying that, uh, that God would count us worthy. And again, when you don't understand how to rightly divide, I've heard preachers say, that means you have to be worthy. But he didn't say that you would be worthy. He says that God would count you worthy. That is our, that's the gospel. Mm -hmm. is that we believe and He counts us worthy. That's, <coughs> that's the transaction that is made. So He counts us worthy and then He fulfills His pleasure in us which results in His name being glorified in us. Now I know many times that, that I didn't want to call myself a Christian in public because I knew that that certainly wouldn't be glorifying the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that a lot of people that have been taught legalism try to act in a way that they think will glorify Jesus Christ by acting perfect all the time. But boy, that's a, a false front that's going to come down. What do they call that? A facade on a building, right? It's when the, when the facade comes down, then you see what's behind it. So we're, it's really a dangerous thing we're doing when we're setting ourselves up to be more than we are because we think that that's what counting ourselves worthy means that we have to make ourselves look worthy mm -hmm. and we're not I mean the truth is that we can admit that we are who we are and let God be the one who is glorified in us by his work now is his name glorified in us when we're puffed up mm -hmm. no. you know we really learn a lot in here and we study a lot and we get to know a lot and sometimes it puffs us up and we start thinking we're better than somebody else because we know more. We're not better than anybody else because we know more. We're, we're not better than anybody else, period. The only thing we've got is we've received mercy. And we have a better future. But we're not better in any way. How about judging others? Criticizing fleshly faults. What are we doing when we criticize a fleshly fault in another person? We're elevating ourselves. We're not so we're sure not seeing them in the Spirit. And we are covering up for ourselves because what we're doing then is by concentrating on them, we kind of puff ourselves up. You know, it's uh, here's what's wrong with you, Ron, and let me tell you, this is what all's wrong with you. But when I'm saying that, I'm saying at the same time, for anybody who's looking for the side, look at me how great I am, you know, because I think I'm better. If I thought I was the same as him, then I wouldn't be criticizing him. I mean, that's what makes me not criticize him. I mean, I know him. You know, if I was perfect, I'd have a lot of things to criticize. <laughs> but he knows me. <laughs> and he's got a lot of things to criticize if we want to look at each other in the flesh. But that's not what we ought to be doing. We ought to be looking at each other as much as we can in the Spirit, which gives us a tiny view of what God sees already because he counts us worthy. I mean, what a wonderful thing that he sees us in the Spirit completely. He sees the finished work. You know, somebody said that we don't understand time because God's in eternity. So in God's eyes, Ron's already complete. You know, and because in, in eternity, the job's already done. Yes? So when someone is absolutely wrong, according to God's word, I mean, how do you handle that? Well, I mean, it, there's two ways they could be wrong. One is doctrinally wrong. In other words, they are they are saying an untruth, mm -hmm. and you're certainly in a position to say, well, wait a minute, let me read this to you. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to correct it, is with God's Word, not your opinion. You know, it's not, hey, I think it's like this, but mm -hmm. rather give them the verse, you know, and let me give this to you. If they are behaving wrongly, they stand to their own master, Sherry, not to you. I mean, and you in your own mind can say, that's bad behavior. You're judging the behavior. But what I'm talking about is judging the person. 
And the minute you start judging the person as no good because they committed a bad behavior, you have elevated yourself up. Because see, you too are saved only by the mercy that God gave us through Jesus Christ. You too have bad, wrong things inside of you. You too are a sinful person. He's just open about it, you know? So it's easy to say, well, look at that guy, you know? Well, I understand that, but I don't really understand. If that's my friend, and I know my friend is doing wrong. Mm -hmm. That I cannot or should not say anything. No, to you that can. Friend. You can say something to them, but not from the point of view that you're not a sinner, and they are. See, that's yeah. what makes it the judgment. You know, you can come yeah, as a friend. That, them, yeah, you, you're this, but I'm not that. Right. You know, I mean, actually, the approach should be, you know, I'm wrong in so many ways, and I do make so many mistakes, and have, and maybe even share one or two. But I want to talk to you about a mistake that you're making. You know, okay. and so that would be. The I can't first find thing. the verse, but I think it's in Corinthians where it talks about, you know, restoring a brother. But but it, it's now, the big ad, the, one. the big admonition is in humility that yeah. you lest you know you're right there too. Right. Yeah. And anytime you're snapping at somebody and criticizing them, you're not being humble. Mm -hmm. You're setting anybody looking from the side and saying, "Wow, you think you're somebody and they're not." You know, that's the that's the big difference. You're putting yourself in a superior position. So, all right, let's read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Because uh, if, if we're not worthy in our daily behavior, and we're not worthy in our daily behavior, then the question would still be, why don't we have to worry about this coming wrath? You know, about the wrath that's coming if we're not worthy in our daily behavior. And of course, it's God's Word that answers all questions. So, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, uh, God tells us through Paul, He says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, the practical application of that is that just before wrath is coming, we're not appointed to it. If we were appointed to it, we'd go right into it. But instead, He's taken us out. That's how we're not appointed to wrath, is we're taken out of here. Wrath's going to happen. We're taken out of here. That doesn't mean we don't suffer, because He's saying we do. You know? But that's, that's, what's, that's what's coming. So, we're going to be saved from wrath. Well, what if things start getting worse and worse right now? You know, what about, what was that guy's name, Camper or whatever, that was saying the end of the Carol world is coming? Yeah. Well, that's because things are getting are getting worse and worse. And he could see them getting worse and worse. And so he's saying, well, it, it must be coming. And that's what we're going to look at right here today in the Bible, is that what was happening to the believers back there in Paul's time is that things were getting worse and worse, and there were people coming around and telling them. It even sounds like they tried to claim that Paul had said it, and you'll see from when we read it, that the rapture had already happened, that the believers were already gone, and now this wrath was coming. That's, the, that's what we're going to look at here as we're reading this. They were afraid. So, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, says Paul, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. So he approaches the subject right away saying, you know, we're, we're, we're beseeching, we're talking to you concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together unto Him. Which we know the word rapture is not found in the Bible. We use that word to describe us being taken out of here. And other words are used, such as... Uh, what's the word? Caught away. Caught away. And, and uh, in this case, by, by our gathering together unto him. That's what it, it uses, those kind of words. He says, so he tells them this. He says, by our gathering together unto him, that ye not be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So, do you understand what this is saying?